The topic that often confuses beginners is the use of indices. As an example, let's have a look at a general model for our furniture problem as it was developed by us in a previous video. For each type of furniture, we introduce the decision variable x that represents the number of pieces produced. The variable x has one index that indicates what type of furniture is meant. What is important is that the naming is clear. Throughout our model, whenever we use an x, we know for sure that we have the number of furniture pieces of a certain type in mind. The same naming convention holds for parameters. If we want to refer to the price of furniture, for example, we use the symbol p with an index that indicates the type of furniture that is meant. Likewise, we have used b for the part availabilities or a for the production coefficients. It's a big surprise for the beginner that such obvious naming rules need not be true for indices. Have a look at this model formulation, for instance. As you can see, in each row of the model I have used new names for the indices. In the objective function I have used j to denote the furniture types. In the first constraint I have used l for the furniture times and k for the part types. And in the domains I have used h for the furniture types. Both models are correct and, besides naming of the indices, they are completely identical. How can we convince ourselves that both models are identical? Well, we could write out what is meant. For the sake of brevity, let's do it with the constraints only. Suppose that we have f equals 3 furniture types and n equals 3 part types. In the first model, if i equals 1 and j runs from 1 to 3, we get a 1 1 x1 plus a 1 2 x2 plus a1 3 x3 is less than or equal to b1. For i equals 2 we have a21 times x1 plus a22 times x2 plus a23 times x3 is less than or equal to b2. And finally, for i equals 3, a31 times x1 plus a32 times x2 plus a33 times a3 is less than or equal to b3. Now do the same for the second model and check what you get for k equals 1 when l runs from 1 to 3. For k equals 2 and for k equals 3. You will see that indeed the very same constraints show up. To confuse you even more, look at a third model formulation. This too is identical to the ones above. To check this by yourself, pause the video now. The lesson to learn here is that the name of an index has no deeper meaning. What counts is to what decision variable an index is attached to and at what position, be it the first index, the second index or whatsoever. An index name, like I for instance, does not need to have a fixed meaning throughout a model. And certain objects, like the furniture type for example, need not always be represented by the same index name. Looking at our example, all we have to keep in mind is that the decision variable x has one index and whatever the name of the index might be, it stands for a furniture type. Likewise, 
the parameter a has two indices and whatever the names are, the first index represents a part type and the second index represents a furniture type. To make myself clear, I do not advise you to change the index names frequently and without any reason. The readability of a model will suffer from unreasonable index naming. But it's important to understand that all three models are identical. As a matter of fact, sometimes you must choose different index names to avoid name clashes. Suppose that for some reason you want to make sure that more or less the same amount of furniture is produced for each type. The amount may differ by at most one, let's say. How would you extend the models above? Give it a try and pause the video now. Here is a solution. xj minus xi is less than or equal to 1 for all i from 1 to f and all j from 1 to f. Or a slightly different story. Suppose that for each type of furniture the total amount of different pieces of furniture is at most f minus 1 larger. Again, take the chance to practice and pause the video now. The following constraints express what we wanted to have. The sum of j from 1 to f j unequal to i xj minus xi is less than or equal to f minus 1 for all i from 1 to f. In both cases you'll need different index names attached to the axis.